Hey everyone. No, I'm not dead. I've just been very busy. Haven't really had a lot of unique jobs across the bench. It's all been pretty boring, run-of-the-mill stuff. But uh, here we have maybe something that could be worth watching. A uh, Furuno fish finder, possibly GPS navigation device all in one for a boat, of course. Model number FCV585. Um, this one encountered a low battery voltage and uh, for some reason ever since the backlight no longer comes on so we don't know if it's um, if it's some sort of uh, damage uh, he, he believes there was poor earthing in the electrical system so whether this has suffered some sort of damage through some other circuit um, trying to pass an earth through through the device itself uh, hard to know but uh, we shall find out um, we're at the back of it and see what happens, but it um, briefly turns on, you get a bit of an image, um, very dark, and uh, then it shuts down again, so uh, could be more serious. I'd expect if it was a backlight only fault that it would stay on and just be dark, but it, it does turn off, so uh, we'll pop the back off and uh, look for anything obvious. Struggling for a little camera height, it's quite a, a big unit. Uh, four screws. In each corner which I've removed so we'll pop that off okay it's a uh, obviously just the the cover includes the mounting bracket uh, bracket mount there so that's just for mounting the unit not sealing the unit up itself we appear to have a bunch of screws around the edge so we'll pop them out see what's going on under there bit of um, padding material doesn't seem to be glued down so we'll try not to lose that all of the screws around the edge are removed so we'll see what happens okay it's um, separating along the edge here so it looks like the screen will be left behind from the back there are connectors here and here so there's uh, probably some sort of uh, flex down from the connector to the motherboard. Um, I'm wondering if maybe we need to undo the retaining nut so that the connector can just fall into the unit as we lift it off. Um, I'll just lift the edge and have a look underneath. Mm. Uh, appears to be... Uh, plug with solid wires going up to the connector and it won't let go so we are going to have to remove the retaining nuts on here so that the connector can fall in as we go Uh, two different size um, diameters so you can't really mix up r the rubber caps not that that would probably matter either so as you can see they're heading inside the case that should come off like that nothing attached very good uh, yes so they're on a board which is going to suspend it um, so that you know it'll be easy to feed back up through into the, the rear housing there Having a look around for anything that may be black and burned, uh, there's no sign of liquid entry, so that's a good. The one thing I can see, which is a bit strange, around this resistor, it's a, um, looks like a power resistor, quite a large one, there's a, br a brown goo around one lead. I don't know where that would have come from, but I can't think what the... That's not got to be factory, surely. <laughs> some some sticky brown goo. Yeah, it's a bit strange. But it's just all concentrated around that end of that resistor. There's no capacitors nearby that have leaked or anything like that. Hmm... I'm going to have to lift this board up and get a feel for 
Well, actually, actually, this has got uh, fluorescent backlights. And there's the leads to the backlight tubes. Okay, there's our high voltage transformer. So this would be our switching uh, transistors that uh, switch across here to create the high voltage for the fluoro tubes. So that's where we're going to be looking. Uh, does this circuit have um, the power it needs to light up? And is it being controlled and or told to light up? Uh, is there a fuse feeding that circuit perhaps as a protection or... Or well, what? Hard to think it would just fail from low voltage. But, uh, yeah, I guess if the, the switching control freaked out when the voltage got too low, and maybe these have shorted as a result, but uh, I, you wouldn't think that the unit would turn off, I suppose, if it's monitoring, um, monitoring the current through the circuit and saying, well, you're not lighting up, so I'm um, no point me to being being uh, being on, so I'll just shut down. <laughs> Who knows? It's uh, we'll have to start taking some measurements, I guess. Well, from what I can see, there doesn't appear to be any circuitry on the bottom side, so everything we need is on the top side, which is good. I can just leave the board in situ and uh, and try and figure that out. It makes life a bit easier. Ah, look, there's a, there's a marking on the board over here, 1.5 volt. What other markings have we got? If they've left us clues as to what should be going on, that'd be nice. We've got 3.3 volt down here, so that's good. We can check that they are present. I would think they would be, given that we get an image briefly. And if anyone's interested, the uh, uh, looks like one of the main chips there is an Altera Cyclone. Uh, what model? Uh, EP1C12Q240C8N. Then some other, some other large chip over here. I'm not sure what that's doing. Uh, so what I've noticed is, um. You can hear something oscillating. It tries to oscillate twice, and you can hear it blip two times, and then it shuts off. Um, just having a closer look, this brown goop down here, I just put the meter on it, and it's conductive. And so I had a closer look around, and it appears that it may have actually come from this capacitor down under here, this little one here. It's got some underneath that capacitor as well. So whatever it is, if that capacitor's leaked, I don't quite know how it made it all the way over to that resistor without leaving a trace. Although if the unit is mounted up this way, it's just going to run down the board and then stop, isn't it? When it finds surface tension against, in this case, the lead of the resistor. I think we have an issue with that capacitor it's quite possibly stopping the oscillator from starting up because it's leaked all its poop out. So a bunch of screws up the side here, um, that side, and um, unplug these earth earth lead, and uh, I've pulled that board off. If you look real closely down in here, there does appear to be some corrosion. The knobs will need to come off. So just uh, pull them, I imagine. They just pull off. Quite tight. Now, remembering which one's which, the uh, gain, gain has the auto marking on the knob. We have quite a bit of flux residue on the underside. Not the cleanest manufacturing process. And uh, that's that's the guy that we're after just there beside these two switching transistors. And his pins will be those two there. 
Now I've got the board supported in a, uh, a little vise so that I can work on extracting the capacitor. It is um, multi-layered PCB so we need to make sure we get enough heat into those pins um, and make sure that it's freely moving before we really yank on it because it should come out nice and easily. Uh, if there's any resistance it's probably going to pull the through hole uh, plating with it and we don't want to do that. So just grab, grab the cap with the pliers, either side of the pliers, and uh, apply heat to both pins at the same time, and wiggle it until you can see the ground pin's not free yet. The uh, positive pin's free, of course, but the ground pin going to take a bit more encouragement so all that thermal mass and the traces are starting to wiggle there there it goes and that looks absolutely disgusting underneath there wow the bottom of that capacitor it's a horrible, wet, shitty mess. <laughs> yeah. Quality brand, Sam Young. Can't say I've heard of Sam Young. Okie dokie. Well, a bit of uh, alcohol and a cotton swab. Uh, the board seems to have cleaned up quite nicely. Um, it does appear to have eaten away at the trace between the end of this inductor and the positive terminal of the capacitor so whatever rail that generates um, and I'm thinking it's a 5 volt rail because I saw a marking that said 5V nearby here so um, I couldn't uh, yeah 5, 5V written beside the inductor I could not measure 5V um, Im immediately um, so I have a feeling that's probably what we heard oscillating trying to generate a 5 volts and it gave up because there was no capacitor on the end of it to smooth out the switching of that and uh, make it good. Um, now, uh, just going over this again, the, the, it has leaked, it has run all the way down through here and then pulled around the leg of this blue resistor. Uh, so I've cleaned that up. There appears to be a bit of corrosion on the pins of this uh, transistor um, down the board. So I'm just going to double check that's okay. Uh, I don't think it would have damaged the transistor itself um, but we need to clean that up as well um, rejoin this back up to uh, the pin of that uh, capacitor and um, yeah that, sh that shouldn't be too hard to do um, and the, just check the ground side I think is still in one piece um, and wick the solder out of the holes um, clean those up and uh, find another cap it's uh, rated 16 volt 100 mic so I think I'll have something here that I can pop in the hole and that will do the job I don't see any evidence that other caps are uh, leaking so just that one um, possibly due to temperature hard to know how hot that may run in here it's all fully sealed up because obviously being in a marine environment you can't have any moisture uh, or, or salty air and so be it getting their way in here uh, it would ruin everything pretty damn quickly I know my lighting here is absolutely atrocious but um, let's turn that down shadowed by this cap <laughs> and, and over here because I've got the two light sources pointing in from this angle um, but if I turn the light on over here I'll do that, that might be alright so what I'm going to do is I've bent the capacitor like that so that I can have the lead coming across to the inductor and I just connect it straight on it will sit slightly up off the board that shouldn't be a real problem um, I think I might just pack a little bit of silicon around it just to stop it waggling about 
Um, I, these these here are just sort of floating around as well, which probably isn't the best. I mean, when you're in a boat, you're going chopping through the water, there's going to be a bit of vibration go through this. They've managed to silicon down all the other capacitors, but um, just just these two here. It looks like starting to get possible stress fractures on the solder joints underneath, so I'll touch those up, and um, and they they should be fine for a while. But uh, yeah, so so we'll pop that in like that, and I'll be able to. Uh, solder that onto the end of this inductor. Because the end of the inductor is such a small connection, uh, what I did is I've scratched back some of the solder mask and then uh, added solder, a blob of solder to that, um, so that when I put the cap down in there I can use that blob of solder to help anchor the, anchor the lead in place. Um, it would have been quite difficult to attach it to, as you can see on this side, um, it's it's a very small area, so I've just made that effectively made that bigger, so that I can get a good connection on the on the end of that. And there's the cap uh, leg bent and soldered into position. So everything's in position. I removed that transistor. It had. Um, slight signs of uh, um, deterioration and the traces there but uh, clean them up and they're, they're fine it's just a little bit of surface tarnishing um, so clean them up and uh, I think we're ready to try it okay here we go and I'll push the power button which won't work because the uh, board is not screwed in, so it's just going to push the board away. Here we try that again. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, it's still not working. Oh dear, we got bigger problems. Well, it looks like we may have more caps leaked. I just uh, closer inspection found some more uh, liquidy goop down in there. Uh, likely culprit this one or this one uh, probably this one okay I uh, replaced this capacitor here um, cleaned up around the board and I thought the traces going to that cap were okay um, and I turned it on again still the same problem um, checking further around the uh, this is the backlight circuitry and up and around the 5 volt circuit um, trying to decide how they get their power, trying to, or trying to figure out how they get their power and um, uh, I, I found that uh, it appears, I thought, I thought incorrectly, I thought this inductor down here was uh, part of a switching regulator um, that created the 5 volt line. Now I th I'm still on the fence about that, I, I'm thinking it may not be but um, I'll, I'll continue. Uh, I found out that this transformer gets 12 volts uh, once the unit turns on. So there's a there's a, a chip down in here. Um, it gets the uh, 12 volt comes into this chip. Uh, when the uh, hit the power button, um, it comes out of this chip uh, into into that cap um, and uh, makes its way to uh, one pin of this. Uh, transformer, the primary, um, and then this transistor down here um, goes from the other pin through to ground. It's obvious that this is switching this transformer and we'll be getting some output on the secondary here. So um, whether this is just part of a linear regulator of some sort, I can't imagine they'll be switching to one rail and then switching to another. It's possible, I don't know. Um, we also have down here something that uh, creates a 40 volt uh, rail which is then further stepped up over here for the uh, uh, the sounder um, tr transducer I believe I believe so but then I found okay so if this has 12 volts on it does this get driven what what goes on here so I put a scope on the uh, um, base or gate I'm not sure if that's a fit or not um, there was no activity from there um, and 
uh, trying to figure out how that gets its drive as well. Um, so uh, it goes through through. Uh, oh, we've got a diode, another transistor here. Uh, this resistor, and that actually has a trace running off to this capacitor that I replaced. Now I'm uh, trying to figure out where it went. I then found out that the trace had got eaten away around the um, where the leg goes through the board, and uh, there was no uh, supply to this resistor. So I've now run a jumper wire uh, down through the board there. Uh, I've checked the case, and there's nothing that uses that hole. So that was quite a handy hole to have, and uh, connected that to the uh, positive lead of that cap on the underside. Now we're about to try again. Hopefully that will activate this, and I'm not sure what controls this um, exactly, um, but that has to be some kind of switching regulator as well. And uh, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, no, I, I don't think there'd be any damage caused through not having the transducer attached to this end, uh, the high voltage end. Um, really hoping not, because I don't have one, and if I turn it on and it, it needs it, well, what's going to happen? You know, we're going to have sparks. I don't know. Um, so really hoping you can turn it on and it will uh, sit there and uh, be happy and just receive no signal back. So uh, let's um, put it back in the in the case and uh, see if the backlight comes on now. So here we go again and power on. Oh, whoa! It beeped. No smoke. <laughs> no smoke. Don't you hate it when a little bit of dust sort of floats around the area and you're like, what? <laughs> hmm. No, no smoke. My imagination. All right. Fixed. Bloody marvellous. Now I'll just turn that off. Okay, you hold it down, three, two, one, zero, off. All right, <laughs> don't want to stress it out too much. All looks okay. All right, so basic uh, leaky capacitor damage. That was a nice easy one. I know it's been a long time since I've had something up for you guys, but uh, I thought I'd better do something. Um, yeah, it could have turned into something more interesting. We have to try, but... Um, yeah, always always double check the traces around leaky capacitors, and um, they look okay. Like I thought that one looked okay, um, it definitely wasn't. All right, thanks for watching, and uh, hopefully I'll have something else for you in the short term. Cheers.